what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. Hello, this is Chris from the Foot Candle Film Podcast. Are you interested in promoting your business to an online audience? Your ad could be right here. Consider advertising on the Mesh Podcast Network. Head over to themesh.tv for details. Welcome to the Street Circle Drive podcast here on The Mesh. I am your co-host, Andrew Moose. With me, as always, Mr. Michael McNally. Mr. McNally. Good day, sir. Thank you, sir. How are you doing? Do, I mean, I'm doing well. I'm so full right now. Oh, I'm excited about, about to doing roll this review. Up, roll up out of this studio in a wheelbarrow. Take a nap. <laughs> oh, man. It, nap time is, is coming soon. I can feel it. Um, and I, we just want to take a minute to thank all of our listeners out there. We really appreciate you. Couldn't do it without you. Um, once you finish this podcast, head over to the mesh.tv and subscribe to all of our shows so that you can have them sent directly to your preferred devices. How do you listen to the mesh? Uh, well, I'm supposed to listen to the mesh. Yeah. You're on it. Yeah. I don't want to listen to myself. You don't. Oh. That's a problem. We need yeah. your number, man. Oh. Huh. All right. I downloaded. Does that count? That counts. I, well, you don't then have to, phone. I, right. I, I podcast on my phone. I listen to podcasts in the car. Right. And, you know, if you are a person or a business out there who... You're a person? Want a person? You said if you're a person? Businesses are people, though. Okay. Right. So if you are a business or a business person or a person in general that would like to sponsor one of our shows here on The Mesh or our network as a whole, which would be awesome, um, go to www.themesh.tv backslash advertise or you can send an email to info at themesh.tv for more information, and we'll send you I like how you say if you're a that. person that wants to sponsor, like, this segment sponsored by Sally. <laughs> Sally is a hey, mom of Sally. two. She goes to C- soccer games on Saturdays. Come on down, Sally. Likes to cook sausage balls for church gatherings. Best on the stage, Sally. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I don't know what uh, okay. people you hang out with. All right on. Well, we would like to welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Speaking uh, of people we hang out yeah. with. Speaking yeah. of people we hang out with. Returning well, champion... Mean. Best <laughs> friend of the podcast, second <laughs> back to back, back to back repeaters, back to back repeaters. This is the first repeater in the same role, though, because remember Mark he's Seaman, our previous role. guest. He's in a different yeah. role oh, now. it's it has been technically, elevated. technically, it is a different role. The person you're hearing right now is director of the Bears Club, associate athletic director at Lenore Ryan University, Mr. Aaron Bessie. Thank you for having me, boys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Excited to be here. Um, I'm full too. Yeah, I just want to start with that. I'm full yeah, too. You joined us at lunch. I did. We'll get to I that did. segment. In a little while Whew. we're still awake Whew. yeah but it Gosh. was worth it prayers up right on. what's going on on campus man let us know golly man where to start there's a there's a lot going on campus right now you guys are busy too you guys know how it is but okay. man we are we are full steam ahead over at lr uh it's a it's a great time to be a bear uh it's it's great sitting down with one and a half bears club members <laughs> uh, it's, it's really it's really enjoyable is that because moose is short or because no. i haven't paid yet oh, no actually Ow. moose is the full one oh, okay. because yes. he just he just rejoined renewed for 2020 i did mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. McNally, you have yet to renew for 2020. Well, so you not, know, just, here's a great question. So if I pay right now, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, this football, is good. This is good for the people. Football starts to know. in late August, August early September. Right? Yeah, March. yep. So March. I mean, we still haven't even gotten into the full swing of baseball season. So like, correct. So I'm, you're wanting me to We're early. you're wanting to hold my money and collect the interest <laughs> on that. Yes, sir. For me to not enjoy the stuff yet. Yo, yes, sir. Hundred yeah, percent. So I wish there was a nice clean time to join. <laughs> But no, but this is uh, this was the question even when I joined last year. Yeah. So, hold on, all right. If I joined in the summer, even our so, bear passes say like. So here's the thing: you can't. Here, here, yeah. here, he's requiring and hopefully realizing that you're not a scumbag and we just want to uh, mm. donate everything. Those are his words, not mine. <laughs> I mean, his words, I'm not, not a bear. I'm a bear supporter. He is, and, and, we are, and we are thankful for you. And that's why I love you, no matter when, <laughs> and no matter when you join. Yes. A bear. <laughs> no, we we love you. And hey, that's a good hey, point, my, my Mr. McNally. There in May. I like, which is so, fantastic. And so now you're going to be, you're going to be even more ingrained into the family, which is another, you know, topic to bring up when we talk about the fact that you haven't renewed yet. Yes. Um, but the, anyways, he no, said but, but he said he was going to give me a hard time. Yeah, so I, I, guess, I did. Well, I'm just, sorry. Yeah. Give him your credit card number right now. It's just, yeah, that'd be great if we could <laughs> One, do two, that. Three, four. Yeah. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, ex- I need the expiration, the security yeah, code, and the zip code. code. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> One, two, we'll, three. See, we'll start with the number. No, so that's a good point you bring up. We're in a we're in a transitional period where we used to do renewals starting in January, but now we're moving to a calendar year because with tax reasons and also with the fact that if we renew people January and February every year, 
it'll allow us March through basically August to go out and get new members. Whereas in the past, we've basically taken June and July and part of August to renew everybody that we know is probably going to renew anyways. And then basically all of August is taken. All right, where do you guys want to sit? You scrambling. know, make sure you yeah get the mailings out, all that kind of stuff. Whereas right. if we're doing renewals now, which is what a lot of schools have moved to, it gives us those three or four months to figure out, okay, we know that, that you know, Moose that and McNally, sense. we know they're going to join. So it's just a matter of getting their money in. And now we can go find alums that maybe they gave back in 2011, they haven't given in eight years, you know, or, or who are people that graduated from Lenora and that are trying to get to the, starting to get to the wealth point where they can afford to give back. Well, let's reach out to those people, introduce ourselves, tell them what the Bears Club is. It just allows us more room for growth yeah. if we do renewals earlier. Yeah. Um, and so people that renew now, like Mr. Moose did today. <laughs> Thanks. You know, they get those benefits through basketball season of next year. So basically, you know, we'll ask him to rejoin again next January slash February, but his card that he's going to get in his season tickets for football, of course, and then basketball as we get closer to next season, that'll all be good through the end of basketball season. So your membership technically shouldn't it's say this because it's school year. Yes. So technically, yeah. So technically you're fine. You're <laughs> fine. I'm still a member. He's yes. Technically you are. still giving it to you. That's why I said, that's why I said half. That's why I said half. I it's gave the hard you a half. sell. I love it's the, the hard, hard sell. sell. But that's always, good. Always be closing. That's right. It's a good thing for people to know though. So I am glad you brought that up because, because we are moving to that, calendar year model it is a little bit different for a lot of people that have been bears club members before and that's the reasoning why which is hard for hard for some people to understand because they've always been giving in may or june but i think if you explain hey we're just trying to grow so we can get more scholarship money for our student well, athletes and, and part of it is still relatively new where you're it allowing is. the payments to go out yeah. or be paid monthly, monthly. yeah that's monthly kind of is huge too yeah. yes okay. it, it is it, it's newer in the fact that like a lot of people didn't know we did it and okay. so in okay. the last two years or so we've really tried to emphasize that so people that are you know in that range where they're really starting to get to the point where they can become a 500 or a thousand dollar member to get season tickets they might not be able to do that at once yeah. you know because that's a big ask but if they can do that over the course of 12 months hey you know that's 83 dollars a month to get a right. parking pass four season tickets all that kind of stuff at mm-hmm. the thousand dollar level that's a lot more manageable when you put it like and that. nowadays that subscription model is kind of ingrained in everybody's brain yeah. so that, that it might even help grow that process it does but if someone joins like you know if you join in march yeah it's like subscriptions yeah yeah pump it always be closing yeah no like if you join in february march that's less monthage that we can do because it has still has to end in December of 2020. Yeah. So like now it'd be 10 months, which is still, you know, hundred dollars a month if you want to be a thousand dollar member, but that helps everybody out. And we're always flexible. We'll always work with anybody, anybody that wants to give money to the bears club and support You'll Lenore and student athletes. We will find a way to take <laughs> it and also be flexible and find out what they want. And if they, you know, we, we got some wiggle room, you know, we want to make sure everybody's happy so that they rejoin year after year. Yeah, and the best part about the bears club is that it does, Spread the wealth to all the yeah, student athletes. It does. At all twenty two sports. Yeah, it yep. really does. Twenty three now we're adding triathlons. Oh nice. Oh really? Hmm. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Brand new venture. Bad for those people. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's not, not something it's I'm like, glad. Yeah, I don't like walking to the mailbox. I ain't trying to think. I think, I think we're all glad that we have no eligibility left when it comes to travel. No, they're glad we don't have any eligibility. <laughs> I was be, I was built for speed, that's not true. distance. Yeah, that's, that's it. yeah, and I think that's gone now too. Man. <laughs> Real quick, I can I, I, I can I can get away from from one other person in a crowd if I need to. That's all you have to yeah, be, don't be the do. slowest gazelle. That's yeah. what I tell my kids all the time. You don't have to be first. Just don't be the last. The slowest. That's, that's, that's true. Right. Especially if there's a bear around. Right. Uh-huh. So yeah. go bears. You know, we're sitting here on February, end of February in 2019, mm-hmm. and it's we're about to have an LR bear be drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. Yeah. Hey, like, first round I mean, like, is it not could happen. 100%. It could happen. No, you're not. You're so, not out of line saying that, man. Uh, Kyle Duggar went to the Senior Bowl and actually absolutely showed out. He was yeah. rated uh, the second highest overall player by grade perspective in the entire Senior Bowl, which is saying a lot because there's a lot of obviously division. Division one power five guys um and kyle really 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 showed what he could do um i think that he didn't look like a division two guy when he was playing with alabama lsu you know all those type of players says a lot he got officially invited to the combine so the first ever lenora and bear to officially be invited to the nfl combine that's the end of this month and then after that in the end of march we're actually going to host the first ever pro day over at Lenore Ryan on our oh, football field. Man. Yeah, so what a trickle down effect. All Atta thirty-two boy. teams, yeah, will be here uh, for a pro day, and so we've never we've never done that before. Kyle is opening so many doors for us, and if he performs as well as we know he's capable of at the combine, there's a very real possibility 
possibility that a team could take a chance on him in the first round. Right, yeah. It's I, I possible. Was, I was reading something. Well, the best part about it is somebody does. It's going to be a good team, too. I mean, exactly. it's, it's yeah. going to be a team yeah, where, yeah, like, I, well, I, I saw Patriots, Chiefs, Buffalo. like, you're, you're getting towards that end of that True. first round. That's a great place to land. Oh, yeah. heck yeah. For him, I mean, to go into an organization of that magnitude would be awesome. I think worst case for scenario right now, based off of what Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay and those guys are saying, is second and third round. Yeah. Uh, so a second night type of guy in the draft, because obviously the first round's first night, second and third the second night, but we're going to be hosting second and third round. Even oh, you know, if even you pull so, it out, oh. you're sitting there talking about yeah. just the coverage. The coverage kind of gets lost on the third day because they're going through it does. three or four rounds, four rounds, and, and it's so all it, jumbled. You know, they'll be and, talking about somebody after when two, uh, three other picks are being made. You're in the spotlight that second LR, night. LR will be in the spotlight for a couple of minutes. Hundred percent to him. I mean, not because of you know, oh, yeah. something that, that everybody else has done. It's his hard work and his effort. And but. the thing that people don't know about Kyle is he's he's a very he's an awesome young man. So he's very humble. Um, got fantastic grades. They actually did a special on him from the academic side this year because him and two teammates on the football team developed a 40-yard dash timer um, that's kind of remote and, and automated that had never been done before. And so they're, they're, he's just an unbelievable kid, and he's going to represent Lenora and so well, so we're just so proud of him. That's he's going to do great things. really awesome, and we're, just, we're, so, we're proud of him too. You know, yeah. that's just – it's great to see. It's good publicity, yeah, too. for sure. It's it's great for you know LR is a football program. It's mm-hmm. great to you know bring in recruits. You know all, all, all that stuff. It's uh, I'm really excited for him and and, and Lenoron. You know it's it's it, it, whenever we get a, a player like that, like honestly, like that dude's a freak. He is like he's a freak, and he he's a man like amongst a, boys. He looked like a freak <laughs> out there, and it was fun to watch, man. Yeah. Like, I just, I just hope we get some freak juniors coming through. Yeah, there are some stories from practice that we've heard, and I'll tell one real quick. So Clayton Horn's a great linebacker, and he told us this. But there was one day in practice, Jason Poe, who's an All-American offensive lineman at LR. He's only a sophomore this year, and he won the Jacobs Blocking Trophy, which is the best blocking back in the uh, in the conference. So right. in practice one day, kind of after the whistle, they're scrimmaging. Jason gives Kyle a, a shot. Like, he gives him, he gives him a, a pretty good hit, like a pretty good – and obviously Kyle, you know, in practice isn't normally going 100%. full 100%. You know, because he's he a man amongst boys. And um, Kyle goes, oh, Jason, Jason, you just <laughs> you just made a bad mistake. You just and he just starts going at him and he goes, you just ruined this for everybody. You, and he spent the next 30 minutes of the scrimmage just demolishing guys, just running them over, hitting them. And so everybody's getting mad at Jason for that cheap shot. But, you know, just stories like that show you how good of a player he is and how he was. Obviously, you know, it doesn't there's no harm in saying this. Obviously, he was. The national defense of the player of the year, he probably should have been playing at, a, at the Division yeah. I level. But we're, we were blessed to have him come here. But that just goes to your point to say that, man, he, he was, he's a freak at this right. level. I mean, he's a man amongst boys. Yeah, national defensive that. player of the year. How many games did he miss? Yeah, exactly. He missed six games, and he was the national and defense also player of the year. I mean, yeah, yeah, he yeah been the exactly. Yeah, the and year. runs punts back. You yeah. know, people wouldn't punt to him anymore. I mean, golly, just got, yeah. the guy's just his, – his resume speaks but for after himself. After a sophomore year, like you say, like especially yeah. now the way everything's so fluid in movement – you wouldn't have even thought twice if he would have entered any sort of transfer portal and, and yeah. opened it up to the, the yeah. Schools. But he stuck around, so yeah. we're yeah we're yeah. we're very thankful for that. And he he was he's very loyal because LR at the time when he was in high school was the only school that gave him a full ride. So he's like, you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick this out. I like what I got going on here, and it's paid off for him too. I mean, he still had just the same amount of attention as he'd probably have as if right. he went to a Division One school. Yeah. Still rated a top four safety by most major, you know, draft guys. So it hasn't hurt him either, which we're very proud That's of. Awesome. Yeah, it just yeah. goes to show if you can play, you can go anywhere. No play, question. Get to the next level. Exactly. If you prove you can play, the NFL guys are going to find you and they're going to want you. Right. Yeah. That's the Kyle situation. That's right. So last football season, mm. great football season. Didn't Fantastic. end the way we wanted, but no. didn't end the way anybody associated with the program wanted yeah. it you know yeah. with that said an early exit in the in for how they were seated and ranked right. and played the whole year early exit I mean, right still second second round no quarterfinals quarterfinals, quarter quarterfinals yep so it's two years in a row to the eventual national champion who kind second of year in a row snuck up on, yeah. on in a <clears throat> they the sure playoffs did. how they were seated yes. lower and they just kind of plowed 100 percent they did through, they, through they their did. bracket they, and the, the final so you know no shame in losing to the eventual no. national champ like you said Lost to the eventual national champ two years in a row. So there's some stinging there, but it a is. program has yeah. been returned, developed, yes. or whatnot. So with that, as Returns. many things do, Good word. losing Kyle, lost coach 
chronic. It's true. Yep. Uh, you know what are what what's the the vibe and the feel for the program and yep. the new staff coming in? How all that how's all that playing out? No, that's a great question. So uh, Coach Jacobs, Mike Jacobs, is coming to us from Notre Dame College, which is also Division Two. Not to get confused with Notre Dame University, we did not take Notre, Notre Dame University's head coach away from them. <laughs> uh, we tried, no, but Notre Dame College's head coach, Mike Jacobs, they he took them to the semifinals two years ago. So when we lost to Valdosta State, who won the national championship, they played Valdosta State in the semifinals and lost by less than a touchdown. Um, the next year, this year, we lost in the quarterfinals to West Florida, who obviously also went on to win the national championship. We've just been getting burned by playing the national champions in the quarterfinals the last two years. And they also lost in the quarterfinals. So uh, Notre Dame College uh, doesn't have the same resources Lenore Ryan does. So it was an all-girls school until about 10, 15 years ago. So they don't have the alumni base that we have in terms of support, um, revenue generation, kind of like the Bears Club and all that kind of stuff. You see the new weight room, the Neil McGahee Center that we built. They don't have anything like that. Uh, their, deer, their, their coaches' stands for games are deer stands at Notre Dame College. So it's a very new program, very new program, uh, very limited resources, whereas here he looked at this situation and said, this is a place I can go win a national championship. You know, like he felt like he had kind of, uh, you know, kind of plateaued at Notre Dame College in terms of what he had to work with. And they did an unbelievable job there with the resources they had. But coming here, he's like, we can we can win it all. Like this is a private, a small private school that can be the first one in Division Two to actually go and win a national championship. And so he saw that and, you know, we gave him a good little paycheck and now he's down here. And so they hit the ground running first month, got an unbelievable recruiting class, very excited about the guys they brought in. Um, and then spring practice will start here in a week or two. And then the spring game will be on Saturday, April 18th. So you guys can come check out him and his staff. They're going to run more of an actual game style for the spring game. So did you get to see what of his staff from he did. Most okay. of his staff is from Notre Dame. There's a couple guys that he brought from other places but he had connections with him from previous places. He was a graduate assistant at Purdue. He played at Ohio State. The so Ohio he's State. The Ohio not State. Ohio so, State College. No, not Ohio State College. <laughs> <laughs> the Ohio State. Right. Um, you know, they love saying the Ohio State. So he's, yeah, I know, right. Um, but he is, uh, he's got that pedigree in Division One, big-time college football feel. He's an offensive lineman by trade, so people think we're not going to run it. We're going to run it. He loves to run it. The last two seasons, he's had running backs that have ran for over 2,000 yards. Um, so he, we're going to ground and pound it, but then he also has the ability to coordinate an offense to where if we've got a good arm, like Grayson, who's coming back, Grayson Willingham, he'll be able to cater to to that guy as well it'll cater to the strengths of our offense so we're really excited about him awesome personality anybody in the community who's met him i think would agree with that and those that haven't i hope they get the chance to because he's here he's hungry um he's got a wife and, and two young boys and they're awesome and i think we're just we're trying to get him into the community as much as we can but he's an awesome guy and an awesome coach we're excited about the future that's great uh, we're we're excited to have him in our community. We want to miss Coach Chronic. He was a great guy. Yeah, um, he was. And he did, did he a is. lot of really great things within you know the short tenure he had at, at Little Ryan and. Um, we and he's heading back we, closer to home. Yeah, he, he wasn't yeah, just he, leaving you know, to leave. The, and all, all, yeah, those, all those things worked wish out. Wish him all the best at Mercer, Division One job sure. and, and where his family grew up and, you know, with some of the special care that um, no one of their one of their children needs, it just made a lot of sense for him. And we're, yeah. we're so blessed to have him, and he did so many amazing things, and we still communicate on a daily basis. He's willing to help us out with whatever we need. So we're rooting for him. It's kind of yeah, like Mike sure. Houston when he, you know, kind of went from here to the Citadel and then James Madison, now East Carolina. Um, as, yeah, I was going to say, as Mr. McNally would know, as Michael knows, but um, – uh, so we're excited about Coach, and that's only going to do good things for us going forward, too, to have him be successful. Awesome. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on uh, with the Bears Club. You know, yeah. how's, how's membership? What do what we need to help get people in your door, man? What can we do? Yeah, I appreciate it. It's very similar to, to you guys. You know, obviously, everybody needs resources to, to keep doing what we're doing and, and give the people what they want, you know, like this podcast. Um, but for the Bears Club, the big thing behind that is that is our basically our annual fund that is the only thing that we have really that generates revenue for student athlete scholarships at Lenore Ryan. So people that join the Bears Club, 100% of those proceeds go towards scholarships. So you're providing educations for kids that uh, probably wouldn't be able to, let's be honest, Lenore Ryan's relatively expensive. So those are kids that probably wouldn't be able to afford to go to Lenore if it wasn't for that student athlete scholarship. And so we want our teams to be funded as well as every other team in division two. And to do that, we need the community and alums to support the bears club parents too. Um, and we're, we're really fortunate because we have a great deal of support. The community has been unbelievable. There are so many people that didn't go to Lenore that joined the bears club year after year, just because they're ingrained in the community. They want to give back. They want to come to football games on Saturdays. I mean, you guys can attest to this, the football, 
football atmosphere is pretty awesome on game days for families super and everybody. Fun. Yeah, yeah it's fun. it's a good time. We see you guys out there every Saturday, and so uh, it's stuff like that 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 we give to them. So if you join the Bears Club at the five hundred dollar level, you get two season tickets for football, two for basketball, and you also get access to the Pavilion, which is brand new as of last great, year. Great facility, oh, by the way. I it, mean, it's incredible. I, I was excited about it before we joined last year, but yeah. Um, it's just that's got to be such a sell, like you said, with Coach Jacobs coming down, and oh, yeah. I mean, he sees stuff like that. I was I was super impressed, not only with just how it looks, but then when you sit there and think for D two, yeah, I mean, it was it, it's, it, it's a Division one level facility, Easily. and Coach Jacobs was joking with me the other day. He's like, "Man, I think I've gotten worse at recruiting since I've been here because it's so much easier." You show them that weight room, you show them that pavilion area, the meeting spaces we have. Uh, it's just a complete game changer that not a lot of Division two schools and some of the Division one schools I've worked at, they don't even have that oh, yeah. type of facility. But the Pavilion in, is specifically, it's free beer, free wine, free soda, free water, free food, free hot dogs, hamburgers, um, along with a local area sponsor. Um, and those passes are ingrained with Bears Club membership as well. And then at the $1,000 level, the big thing there is you get four season tickets, but then you also get a parking pass for that tailgate lot um, on the, I guess, quote-unquote, west side of the stadium. Um, you get to do donuts in the food, oh right? yeah no i <laughs> but that parking pass is a sell i mean yeah, it, especially yeah. if you've got family no donuts no donuts. if you've got family and kids it's a it spot is. that's you know you've got security coming into the place we do it's fenced off it's right there at the pavilion is i mean open you, field you for the kids to run around tailgate have fun with your friends and know that your kids are running around finding their friends. And exactly. Their, their thing. It's awesome. So I am convinced that I've seen some of the most biggest hits <laughs> oh. by some of those. Uh, oh, kids. Those those ga- some, of those, uh, some of those little games that those kids are playing out there are harder hits than I see, actually see inside the stadium. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> well, I hear from I parents. Wait for, they for, get for the Kronos blasted. to get blasted by the errant footballs, too. Uh, yeah. That happens, too. That yeah. happens, too. Yeah, Keep your head on a swivel out there on the tailgate. 100%. There will be the occasional kid that, you know, I'll be walking around to different uh, tailgates, and a kid will come up crying, Dad, so-and-so <laughs> just jacked me up. And they'll be like, yeah. oh, well, I didn't see it, son. Yeah, yeah, you so know? For everybody that's not been, like, they're, they're running around on the field in yeah. the middle where cars aren't. Cars are lined no. up two rows Cars don't go the across the field, yeah, so it's and, safe. Um, so it's great, but you're so going to see friends across the field. The easiest way to get there is to cross the across field. Across the field. Watch out. Watch out, man. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. All but kinds watch of Watch out. You might say there's balls, a clear path, footballs. nothing's going on here, and all of a sudden a game of tackle with 37 middle school kids comes right your way. <laughs> and they are not going to stop for you. <laughs> yeah. that, they are not stopping just, for those adults walking across. You're just a big piece of grass at that point. You're a blocker, right really. You. They're going to use you. Yeah, sure. no, it's it's a great family atmosphere, and I think that's the biggest selling point with that tailgate area. And people curious, how do I get in there? Well, that's how. So yeah. if you're a $1,000 member or above, you get a parking pass. And um, we got flexible things we can do where if you join for $1,500, there are levels that go anywhere from $50 a year all the way up to $5,000 a year. So there's all different benefits plus. so yeah five thousand dollars away ten yes if there's a ten thousand dollar bears club yeah like moose or anybody like, that wants call to. me call me eight two eight three two eight seven nine four six uh that's eight two eight three two eight seven nine four six yeah we we will take your ten thousand dollars that would be great but but yeah so that the, that goes to show if there's a fifty dollar member out there that just graduated or, or is a community member and is like hey i want to support that cause it's an awesome cause to give back to student athlete scholarships then hey we we that every little bit counts and so that's why we make those levels range all the way from 50 a year up to five thousand dollars plus is the highest level so right. so uh, d- what's the website again the website is lrbears.com slash give slash give slash give yeah lrbears.com slash give is where you can make your donation and kind of see what some of those levels are if you go to our regular website lrbears.com that's where all of you guys can find out about what's going on you know with kyle duggar with our teams you know what what games are at home that weekend you know how's the lacrosse team doing so if you want to find out any information on schedules or just kind of what's happening the latest with lenorine lrbears.com is the main website you add on the slash give if you want to give to the Bears Club. Gotcha. A couple other things. Real quick. One, there's been obviously last year we had the renovations to the yes. Uh, what even I wouldn't say renovations to the football stadium. We had the temporary bleachers put in. What is the plan and schedule question. timeline for the stadium? Yeah, it's a, uh, another good question. Hey, kudos to you, man, Michael. You I don't did have your, answers. I your questions, buddy. Did, did yeah. Moose write these for you? <laughs> <laughs> he can't write. Yeah, my, my That's good. boy. <laughs> You no. finger painted them. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you there go. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so that's another great question. So we're actually in the middle of a very unique time because there's three different capital campaigns that we're starting within athletics. And the main one is the football stadium. So that 
that'll kind of get unveiled over the next few weeks to month. Um, so when, and well, it, it, tell us all about it. Yeah, so well, <laughs> let me lay it out for you guys, you know, if we can mute this. No, I'm just kidding. No. So that's going to be probably a multi-phase project. Um, it's going to involve what we call the home side. We're going to try to get away from the home and away sides, being the names of them, east side and west side, because if you go to a lot of big schools and if you go to an LR game, a majority of the fans on the quote-unquote visitor side are still Lenoran fans. So there will be a visiting team section, you know, on that away, away quote-unquote side, but it'll really be an east side and a west side. Both sides will get renovated. Uh, the entrance areas, bathrooms, uh, concession stands, um, the actual seating themselves, some suites, hopefully, the press box, like I mentioned. So it's going to be a full-fledged a renovation. Project. Yeah, the video board, all that stuff's in the works. So it's going to take a little bit of time. The first priority is going to be that quote-unquote home side, um, because obviously right now we have temporary bleachers. Now, was all this kind of in the works and, and being thought out before the it was. bleacher situation It was being place, thought of okay. as part of the master strategic plan. And it was plan. just like, now we're just going to yes, really it got it. it got really moved to the front of the pile when that happened so um the first phase will be that that home side with the seating and with the press box and with bathrooms that's a big one concession stands uh, an elevator for the president's box stuff like that so that'll be the first phase it's we're still going to have the same setup this coming year so i think that's important for people to know now is we're still going to have the same setup for this year with the temporary bleachers but i think a lot of people actually enjoyed that yeah. um it was a good setup a lot better than people were expecting so we'll have that again come next december is ideally if we can raise enough money we will begin taking taking out those uh, kind of rental bleachers for good and start renovations for some permanent home side seating. And then after the, that next season, then we'll start to work our way around the stadium. So it'll take some time because it's going to be a big project financially, yeah. but we plan and you still have to play games and we between. still have to play games right. in between. So that kind of takes away four or five months Especially for, your, for you guys. Cause we're in the playoffs. There's playoffs. Yeah. Right. We've been in the playoffs deep into the year, the last two years into December. And so that kind of you're takes knocking a, off another month, month and a half. Exactly. Of time. Exactly. But yeah, so that's the plan. We're also looking at renovations renovating Schufer Gym, and then also renovating our baseball stadium. So I heard the baseball. That, that was kind of kicked off. Uh, yeah, about uh, a month, month ago. ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the first phase of that will be the turf. So we need a turf field. It's just going to be a better experience for our student-athletes. That that field doesn't drain at all, and the grass is, is really kind of worn. So you know, from a safety perspective and a weather perspective, uh, the turf will be huge. So the turf will be the first phase. Then we'll do yeah. some seating, grandstands, and then we'll do kind of the rest of the stadium, hopefully. Um, but we're going to start with the turf, kind of get through that, see how that goes. Um, and go from there with the baseball one. And then with that, we'll probably do some improvements over at softball as well. Don't turf Because uh, the they need thing. some. Are you turfing the whole thing? We are just turfing the, the whole baseball field. The whole thing. The whole pitchers, I hate pitchers that. mound. I went to watch ECU and play at the University of Houston last year. Yeah. And they have their whole thing turfed, including the dirt and the mound. Thanks, Michael. You're really helping us sell this. This is great. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I see where you're coming from. It, it started as just probably the oh, infield. How dare you not ask Michael before you do anything? I know. <laughs> that's, that's on us. Yeah, I'd just like to take this opportunity to publicly apologize. Well, for that. I'm going to publicly deny. <laughs> Any sort of apology. <laughs> no, 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 no. Forgiveness. That hurts. That hurts. Apology not accepted. <laughs> but we we t- not accepted. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. So we talked to a lot of people, and and App just did this recently, and. From a safety perspective, it's kind of it seems better if you're going to go ahead and do the infield to just kind of do the whole thing. And so we we looked at both. We looked at both. We looked at all of no it. We looked at the costs. Less, yeah, I guess. Safety yeah. So I mean, sense. it would stop on the. We looked at it stopping near foul territory and maybe just doing the infield and not doing the you know the actual kind of area where the, the shortstop. Yeah, and then not doing where the pitcher's mound is. But we just said let's let's do the whole thing because weather wise, that's going to completely solve all the issues that we have from safety and drainage. Drainage is the worst thing out there. Yeah. If it rains. It takes days for that thing. had that same issue years yeah. ago when they redid their turf. And we don't have a facilities crew that handles that, so right. that's players and coaches that have to go out there and squeegee that thing and get it to drain and figure it out. Oh, and so, so from a perspective of recruiting, it's really – it's really been a challenge for us with the drainage being as bad as it is. A lot of schools can get away with it because their drainage isn't as poorly set up as ours okay. was. Ours were in the situation where we really need to turf it, and we looked at the outfield, and the outfield really needed it too. So we yeah. just kind of said, corner will be hot You could now. have re- just recruited yeah. just squeegee yeah. guys. Hot corner will be hot. they will be coming off that turf. Yeah. He should have yeah. just recruited squeegee guys. <laughs> squeegee guys. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, hey, we're saving are. money. We're just going to yeah. five guys to go out there and squeegee every we'll pay day. pay you minimum wage, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, what position you got me? Ah, squeegee today. <laughs> squeegee guys. <laughs> oh, can I use this bat now? Squeegee's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it's to a hard just, sell. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah, mean yeah. to uh, poo-poo on that. No, I just, it's okay. I've been to a few, and I, and I guess it also shows the old, you know, get off my lawn sort of thing in me. 
change yeah. and all that sort of different stuff. But. Yeah, but it's good to have feedback, and obviously everyone feels differently about it. So that'll be that's a challenge with every campaign is you know you want to make everybody happy so that they want to get in, involved with the campaign, but you know at the same time you got to kind of mix and match and, and see what everybody prefers, and then go with kind of the best overall payment well, moving forward. Day, so we honestly, need the coaches and the kids to be happy. Exactly, I mean, that's the product that that's, sells to everybody. That's else. kind of what we went with because we were looking at doing part of it at first, but it just turned out that let's just go ahead and do the whole thing. Right on. Thanks, man. We appreciate you hey, coming. Hey, really happy good. to be here. Anytime yeah. you guys want to buy me lunch, I'm in. Uh, right on. <laughs> uh, so uh, this kind of segues into our uh, event section. Uh, LR is playing the Hickory Crawl Dads coming up. Uh, April 1st at LP Friends Stadium. Doors are 530. Games at 6. Are you going? Oh, dude, yeah, I'm going to be there. Yeah. It's always fun. We love doing that, and we're very thankful that the Crawdads allow us to do that every year. For sure. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a great community event, too, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. You get those guys that are aspiring to get to that level, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's just it's, – it's a really great community event. And um, if, you, if, you, if you don't have tickets, go get tickets. Uh, you can get them at crawdads.com and all that good stuff. Uh, another uh, great event that I wanted to bring up is the Polar Plunge for Special Olympics. It's happening – uh, next, well, depending on when you listen to this podcast, it's February the 29th, uh, and it's at the Wildlife Access, uh, on, off, Wildlife Access Road on 127. Uh, you can go and you'll, you'll see the signs for it. You can find out all the good stuff about that on, uh, on the internet. You know, you can just put it in, in Google and you can find out all the information. Can you believe <laughs> you, that? You plunging? Can you plunge it? No, but all the uh, guys from Countryish Podcast are doing it. Oh, really? So yeah, so Reap and Alan and uh, uh, Sean and Mark are both are all doing it. They're all dressing up. It, it's going to be fun. So go out there and support those Mesh TV guys. Uh, they'll they'll be out there. Awesome. Um, so another event that I also wanted to bring up was there's nothing to do here event. Have you heard about this? Uh, yeah, uh, Holler Mill. Yeah, Holler Mill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is it the crossing at Holler Mill? Yeah, uh, it's a great networking opportunity. It's uh, on March the 12th. I believe it starts at five. So yep. put that on your calendar. You have to get tickets uh, th- through Eventbrite. It is free, but you do need to get, get a ticket. They'll have speakers. It'll be a great networking opportunity. Food, drinks. I think it's they promoted it well, but it's a it's part of that campaign that the county's doing with. You know, really trying to to highlight and show and video organically and through some production of all the things that we have going on here, but selling it in the wonderful tongue in cheek mode right. of there, nothing to do here. There's nothing to do here, obviously. So don't don't go to the March 12th event. Don't do that. Yep, that's what they would say. <laughs> that is what they would yep. say. I'm auditioning right now. <laughs> You're good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, so, which now brings us to the best part about this show: the food review. Is that what this brings us to? I don't know. I uh, can say that in front of Aaron. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's a good bridge. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So it wasn't, though. <laughs> at all, but I'm here for you. All right. So well, let's go ahead and, and throw this out there. So we've been doing this podcast for too 40, long. 41 episodes. 41. That's, yeah, that's a lot of hanging out with you. Thanks. Um, so we, all of our – I was trying to think about this when we were eating. Mm-hmm. Don't all of our restaurants uh, – well, you can still smell the smoke. The – all of our restaurants that we've reviewed have been in Catawba County, and I'm pretty sure they've all been in Hickory, if you count Longview as Hickory Do you count West, Longview as Hickory? West. I, I don't think the people at Longview would like that too much. I want you to give me the numbers of listeners from Longview, and then I'll tell you how much I'm worried about I'll that. I'll count all two of them. Um, so, and we've done a few Longview ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, they should be proud we've done Longview ones. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, for um, sure. So, this time we actually ventured across county lines for the first time. And it's not that we have changed the the theme and the focus of this wonderful podcast. It's that this restaurant we went to is about 15 minutes away, give or take, from downtown, depending on how fast you go on 40. And it's awesome. And if somebody wants to challenge me and say that there's a better barbecue place in Hickory, dude, sign me up. I'll meet you out there and prove that it's not. Yeah. Hit us up. What's our email? www dot the mesh dot tv backslash advertise yeah and you can put on there <laughs> Mc, oh mcnally's let, wrong give us some money first <laughs> and then i'll meet you some restaurant and tell you why i'm right we went to jd smokehouse it's in technically rutherford college but if you're driving on 40 it's on the valdez exit oh, 113 shout out, shout out to nick kincaid so you go exit if you're going west on 40 and take exit 113 stay turn right stay in the right hand lane that lane ends at JD's Smokehouse, told you it's the easiest Wait, way to, to get there. Have you been there before, McNally? <laughs> I, I conservatively have probably eaten there forty times. Right. Um, well, I used to work in Burke County, so it opened while I was working there, and I went there a lot. 
JD's is open for lunch and dinner Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's it. That's it. They cater on Wednesdays and those other days. So if you want, they do catering Wednesday through Saturday, um, which is just as good. I've had them cater some events and things that I've done as well. Um, so JD Smokehouse is um, exactly what you would think of: pork, chicken, ribs, brisket. Uh, they've got kids menu. They've got a great mix of sides. I know we'll oh, go through our favorites. Oh man. Um, I think at this point I've probably had everything on the menu except for I've seen people eat their barbecue dog. I have not had it. Mm-hmm. Hot dog on a bun covered in chopped pork. Um, the best thing about JD's is, well, one, it's all oh, it's the best thing. So it's not one of those that you think it's not Eastern or Western. It's truly smoked everything. Mm-hmm. They give you the sauces on the side. I would encourage anybody that goes, just try whatever you get first to see what you want. Because they have Eastern-style vinegar, pepper sauce, Western-style tomato-based. You can get that garbage they give you in South Carolina, but... What, that white sauce? That, no, South Carolina is that mustard-based stuff. Oh, white sauce is Alabama. Yeah, well, I don't care for that either. They can keep all their sauces there. All right. Then, if you can ask for a hot sauce, which, I mean, you guys, have, it's not... You're not going to light you on fire. It just gives you, you that you extra little any, bit. You don't need any more hot than what they put on the table. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's barbecue sauce. It's good, with but, a but kick. it's manageable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so you add that to whatever you're at. So today I went, normally I tell people this too. I love brisket. I've got a lot of family in Texas area, so I've had my share of brisket. This is probably my favorite brisket I've had outside of Texas. Texas just. That's, that's saying high something. Praise. That's saying something. Now I have not been, I am sure there are places I've not been to. Uh, Kansas City and got burnt ends, you know, it, but which is part of the brisket. But this is excellent. Mm. The pork is great. I'm an Eastern style boy by heart. I don't turn away pork regardless of if it's Eastern or Western. Um, but today I had the pork, the chicken, and then every, all those plates come with two sides. I had green bean casserole, which is a staple, and the Brunswick stew, which has become my new staple. I used to eat the fried okra and the jalapeno grits all the time. I mean, this is just a sampling of what they offer on sure. the sides. I mean, yeah. it's great sides. And then, you know, if I don't watch my figure, who will? I had water. <laughs> Guys, because I'm just, uh, you know, I'm not here gosh. to be a glutton. <laughs> I'm not here to be a glutton, he says. <laughs> so. Um, uh, all of our former listeners know that uh, <laughs> that is just patently false. I, I think this is the first time that I had the chicken there. I've heard people talk about the chicken. And and she even said when I ordered it, it doesn't come out whole piece. They chunk it, which is great because mm-hmm. you know you're going to town. You don't need to worry mm-hmm. about a bone and you know all that stuff. Yeah, but it's thick chunks. It's not like it's oh, yeah. chopped like the barbecue or anything else. And it was, it was super juicy. It was awesome. The chicken was great. I even put some of the vinegar sauce on it. The pork is fabulous. It's well smoked, but then I add the vinegar sauce to it. The green bean casserole super cheesy. Yes. It's the French style cut, so it's not like this big, thick, chunky stuff that doesn't mm-hmm. get all nice and mixed together. And then I love their Brunswick stew. And I used to not be a huge Brunswick stew fan, even though I you know, went to school down east. Their Brunswick stew has a ton of pork in it. It's got still has your potatoes, your beans, corn, and this has a little bit of spice to mm-hmm. it that I thought and I and I, I switched Aaron. He he got it as well. Oh, Oh. But it, you, I really could get a quart of this, and that could be my meal. I've had a lot of Brunswick stew. That was the best Brunswick stew I, I have ever it's had. It's be- my favorite I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Ever. Um, ever. It's delicious. And so I just I love JD's. JD's can be a little pricey, depending on what you're thinking when you think of barbecue. But it's almost like you've got to think of this as more of a destination high-end barbecue and not your – traditional down home in a shack where it's you know barbecue was traditionally made to be communal because it was cheaper you get like, your money's worth this, though too oh, oh yeah you have a you had a go to go box i did I mean, yeah you went big we'll get to your order here in a little bit i, I have done the, the aaron, i've done the aaron bessie special before <laughs> but good gracious yeah, part i two, looked at that yeah. thinking i don't know how i did that back in the day and yeah. i'm a i'm not little part two of this podcast is everything that aaron so needs that's the one thing i would say is it can get a little pricey uh depending on on what you do eat um I know what I got it was probably sixteen bucks all the way around. Yeah, um, but man, it was awesome. Yeah, um, 
What'd you have? Man, I'll tell you what I had. I had the chunk chicken, that smoked chicken. Um, everybody knows I eat chicken all the time. And let me tell you, it's skinless. It's like the best smoked chicken you've ever had. Like yeah. the big, they smoke it in the skin and then, and then they, they chunk it. They smoke it, they skin it, and then they chunk it and they give it to you. And it is just a vehicle for that hot barbecue sauce because that stuff is the jam jam. Like it really is. Like the 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 table has multiple bottles of sauce on the table. This one, the one I'm talking about, is the one that has like a a, a red lance. You have to ask for it. They don't leave that out on the table. You have to ask for oh, the hot do? sauce. Okay. Yep. So th- this stuff that I had was just out of just so far out of bounds. Delicious. Um, my some of my favorite chicken, uh, you know, in the state that I've ever had is from this place. Um, I had just gotten turned on to this place a couple weeks ago. and You texted me when you went. I texted. The first thing I did. Because you knew I'd been there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I was like, McNally, we got to go give J.D. Smokehouse some love because the place is just so good. And, you know, I just kind of reiterate from what McNally was saying is that, you know, we do try to – stay within the friendly confines of Hickory metro area. I would consider 15 minutes outside of downtown pretty metro area. So that's my um, reasoning for the the review here. And not to mention, um, I could go just sides here. Like th- this is like the side champion of the world, I think. Well, um, that's what you I, 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 you were talking about. You were just going to get the side plate. Yeah, I was went. thinking about just getting the, uh, the side plate. Attention. But then I'm like, uh, I, I just drove 15 minutes. I got to get chicken. So <laughs> anyway, the other sides they have baked beans, coleslaw, potato salad, uh, fries. But I had something that is just, and you got to eat it for dessert. It's called the sweet potato crunch, and it's just like, I mean, it's like what grandma used to make. You get type 2 diabetes just eating stuff, but it is fantastic. It does have a lot of that pecan, like sugar streusel or whatever it is. and But not um, too much of the pecan because I'm not a huge, you know, yeah, it's pecan more nut strus- fan. It's more it's, that streusel You're right. It, is, it doesn't taste like it. That is, that is straight up dessert. Yeah, it was Homie, good. That I is did, good. I, did, I ate it last. I mean, yes. it was like, you I saved knew, that I thing. Knew. But the last time I went, um, my buddy and I did split the, uh, two different desserts there. That mud pie and the banana pudding is both Ooh, real good. I never too. had the mud pie. It was really good. Legit? Yeah, really good. Um, so, honestly, if whatever you're looking for, you can find it at JD Smokehouse. Like, I, I'm, I just can't stress how good this place is. It kicks everybody down the stairs. Like, it's real good. Um, I mean, do you agree with me, Aaron? Tell, tell me all about it. Oh, my gosh, man. So I, I was kind of telling the guys on the way over there that, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, this is the best barbecue place ever. You know, you hear that a lot. And there are a lot of really good barbecue places. I love barbecue. I never turned down a barbecue meal. But um, I went all out as, as soon as Moose said, hey, man, you're on me. You know, I figured, okay, this is great. So <laughs> oh, I, I, He did say that. You went <laughs> to the triple I threat. Did. I, was, <laughs> I, I was, I'll show this guy. I was just going to get pork or brisket. And then he goes, hey, man, you're on me. You got me last time we went out, and I was like, that's right, actually. So there's a combo up there. I'm gonna, <laughs> so I got ribs, pork, and brisket. And, man, I am so glad that I did. The other thing is, you know, I didn't – who knows the next time I'll be back there because it is only open a couple days of the week. I went all out, and, man, am I glad I did. I got, I got dinner tonight. You know, I'm looking forward to that. But the ribs, to start with those, were incredible. Uh, the tops – I did. Those, there are no leftovers of the ribs. So the seasoning that they put on the top of those ribs is, is something that is definitely in the top three or four of the ribs I've ever had. The seasoning made those ribs. Um, you can tell that those have been coated on and, and you know, cooked in the, oh, it was just delicious, delicious. I could have eaten almost the candy. tops. I almost mean, it, candy. It really was. It is. It is. Those were delicious. Clean those up. Went to the pork from there. Uh, the pork by itself, I always try it by itself before I add any sauce. Uh, was very good. It was very good. It was very good barbecue you could eat it by itself which is always a staple of good barbecue um and then the brisket was just kind of it would just tear itself apart i mean it was just it just falls apart in your fork um delicious cooked perfectly i think um and then to go to moose's point that hot barbecue sauce is incredible it takes good barbecue sauce to another level uh it's not hot hot it's not like texas pete hot it's or where you can't taste what you're eating if you right. actually get too much on there. It tastes like barbecue sauce with just with a little kick. Um, so that was amazing and took the whole meal to another level. And then for the sides, you know, to piggyback off these guys, I got uh, green bean casserole, which was delicious. Uh, the green beans kind of were good standalone, but then with the cheese and stuff in it, oh, just great, great stuff. And then the Brunswick stew I already mentioned was 
Uh, I've had a lot of Brunswick stew and all Brunswick stew, I think is pretty good. This was the best I've ever had. And I think the big part of that was the pork that they put in it. They they, they don't go skimpy on the pork. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the kick too. I liked the kick too. They seem to have uh, kind of perfected the balance on their spices in terms of making it so that even if you're not a big spice fan, it's not going to be overpowering, you know, or too hot, but it does provide a little kick of just flavor where you're like, like, you need to drink water after you have a no, a hundred percent, but it, but it provides so much more flavor. So I was blown away and I'm just really, really thankful that these guys took me out there for this, because even though it's not in the Hickory area, this is a place that I would for sure get on 40, you know, for a work lunch, even from LR and jump down there and have some, have a great lunch on Thursday or Friday because it was that good. Yeah. It was that good. It was awesome. What do you stick what, with us, kid? What, yeah. What do Seriously. You, oh, oh what? JD's for me is hands down 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. No doubt. I, I after today's experience, I have to go ten out of ten. And it has. We've talked about this too. It has ambiance. I mean, it's got the yes. the, the the red and white checkered tablecloths. Right. You've got the ladies, you know, running around like kind of a free for all. They all come helping you filling up. It's your crowded, with, crowded but fast drink. service. Yep, crowded but fast. I mean, you timing wise, you could get there if you got there at twelve thirty. I will say you will be waiting outside, mm-hmm. or at least waiting for mm-hmm. about in a line for about 15, ten to fifteen minutes, depending on what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've got a couple of seating rooms. They do all they can to yeah. find you a seat. But they've got some ambiance, like the nice the wood paneling, kind of that old timey antique with the license plates and different stuff on the wall. I mean, Very it's cool. got a great clean look to it, but still has a little bit of that kind of down home barbecue restaurant charm. Great character, but like I said, in, a, in more of a high scale kind of yeah. atmosphere. They've got the service figured out too. So when you walk in, it's counter service. You yes. you place the order at the counter, you pay at the counter. And then they bring to bring the food to you at, at your table, and pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, real quick. From the time that we paid to the time we got our food was just a few minutes. So yep. you can go eat a quick lunch and be back and forth within an hour oh, from Hickory. I yeah. would say no yeah, problem. You're right. Even so, with the drive, I did, yeah. for me, it's is a no brainer. Ten out of ten. Yeah, for sure. Um, on, on, on the Andrew Moose food review scale, it's a solid six point eight out of seven. I don't give perfect scores. <laughs> um, the um, you know. The that place is ninety seven for normal. Yeah, people. it's it's so good. The <laughs> um the the decor, the service was fantastic. My my tea glass stayed full the entire mm-hmm. day, uh, or the entire trip. Um, had good company. The it, it was it was a really good experience. So, uh, if you guys want to go check out JD Smokehouse, you can find them on the interwebs. And what would you grade Smokehouse? it? Oh, ten. 10 out of 10. 10 out no of 10. brainer. You said 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm with no, you. Not, I have to do the math on your stupid oh, are you, are rating you scale. Okay. So I followed we, your lead, McNally. That was a 10 out of 10, for man. For sure. If you want to find out more about JD Smokehouse, you can go to JD's hyphen smokehouse.com on the internet. And again, the, the address is 500 Malcolm Boulevard in Rutherford College. Um, again, only open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, 11 to 9. So well worth the trip. Well worth mm-hmm. your trip. Mark mm-hmm. your calendar and just go. It's worth it. Mm-hmm. Guys, thank you so much for today. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll do it again real soon, hopefully. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you guys for what you do for not only Lenore I'm, but for the community. We are very lucky to have you guys here. Yes, I mean you that. Are. They didn't yes, pay me are. to say that either. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate you, Aaron. That the um, Bears Club is one of the best organizations in our community, and we're we're happy to support. So, uh, just make sure you come back and visit us, and maybe come back during football season. Anytime, yeah, anytime, man. guys. All right, guys. So to find out more about the Bears Club, go to lrbears.com slash give there you go give all you can uh for michael mcnally and andrew aaron bessie uh, my name is andrew moose thank y'all for being great listeners to the street circle drive podcast here on the mesh.tv see you next time You've been listening to The Mesh, an online media network of shows and programs ranging from business to arts, sports to entertainment, music to community. All programs are available on the website as well as through iTunes and YouTube. Check us out online at themesh.tv. Discover other network shows and give us feedback on what you just heard.